Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the Philosophy for Philistines channel with me, your reluctant prophet. Today we are going to discuss our current ideological dilemma and why, if many, and perhaps even most, are completely ignorant of the problem this poses to peace, order, and good government. An astounding aspect of ideological possession is a conviction on the part of the ideologically possessed that they aren't being motivated by the beliefs which possess them. In fact, they appear utterly unaware that it is their beliefs which causes, cause them to march in lockstep with others who hold to similar beliefs. Moreover, when confronted by this fact, they will often vehemently deny the beliefs which are obviously motivating their behavior. In contrast, those who are motivated by philosophy understand how it shapes their perception of reality to motivate their behavior. Therefore, they are able to defend their philosophical position using ethics, epistemology, and ontology to explain said position. This defense often enrages their opponents, since their opponents have given little thought as to why they think as they do, deny that they are motivated by things beyond their capacity to explain, and therefore view differing opinions as a personal challenge. Out of this mindset stems the intolerance which has become so common today, particularly when said intolerance is hidden under the guise of the political correctness of diversity, inclusiveness, and equity. The former category unwittingly creates a collective consciousness where people are unaware that their beliefs has ca have caused a loss of individualism, while those in the latter category are able to withstand attacks on their individual character while defending their position with reason to avoid the logical fallacies and ad hominem, ad hominem arguments so often employed by their opponents. The former category will often condemn the latter for their obstinate refusal to surrender their thoughts to the collective unconsciousness, while individuals in the latter category understand the former merely re reflects the collective zeitgeist and refuses to join them by choosing to think for themselves. The former makes faceless state control inevitable, while the latter insists that a state which ignores the rights of the individual will inevitably create a collective tyranny, proving that democracy, when unrestrained by means of a charter or a constitution, is the fastest road to hell on earth. Which is why right wing has become a term of execration because the left has become so radicalized and authoritarian that anyone who longs for freedom is now viewed as an extremist. The general population, under the influence of the collective unconsciousness, simply does not realize nor ex accept the radical leftism is fast turning Western democracies into tyrannies. As importantly, many have forgotten how a republic differs from that of a democracy. For by definition, a republic is a representative form of government that is ruled according to a charter or constitution. This form of government also includes constitutional monarchies such as Great Britain, Canada, and Norway, while a democracy is a form of government that is ruled according to the will of the majority, or in other words, by mob rule. This is why it is important to read philosophy and studied history, for it was the inventors of democracy, the Greeks, who first warned us how easily democracy can descend into tyranny if left unrestrained by constitutional or charter law. And I provide a link here, and from that link I'm about to read a short excerpt. Democracy ruled by the ignorant. Plato believed that expertise is a crit critical attribute of a leader. He criticizes democracy of seldom producing such characters. 
Rather, it elects popular spinsters who are effective in manipulating popular opinion. To depict this, Plato used an analogy of a ship navigation in Book 6 of the Republic. He contests that in order to select the appropriate captain, a popular vote is ineffective because people can be swayed by characteristics as irrelevant as their appearance. Instead, we should seek out only the most knowledgeable candidate it is, as it is he who holds the required expertise. Plato illustrates the ignorance that democracy yields in producing a captain. The true navigator must study the seasons of the year, the sky, the stars, the winds, and all other subjects appropriate to his profession, if he is to be really fit to control the ship. The electorate think that it's quite impossible to acquire the professional skill needed for such control, and that there's no such thing as the art of navigation. End of quote. <laughs> and a quote from Edmund Burke. It is ordained in the eternal constitution of things that men of intemperate minds cannot be free. Their passions for, forge their fetters. And that again, Edmund Burke, from his reflections on the revolution in France. And so this is where we have arrived in this postmodern dystopian nightmare, led by politicians of intemperate minds, voted into office by an ignorant electorate who are utterly unaware of the ideological possession which motivates their shallow view of life until we become willing to study to show ourselves approved we are screwed and remain victims and will remain victims of our own hubris and ignorance unaware of our own ideological possession unrenewed in the spirit of our mind from ephesians chapter 4 verses 23 to 32 in the king james version and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We're putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. And from Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, also in the, from the King James, Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't divide the word of truth if you don't read it. We have to study. People have become completely ignorant of what is motivating them. And that, my dears, will ultimately become our downfall if we don't start to have the spirit of our minds renewed. And that I pray for you. Pray that for me as well. God bless you all. And have a wonderful June 20th. Tomorrow is solstice. God bless you.